My position on Cuba has been consistent. It hasn't wavered before I was elected for president the first time. It didn't change after I was elected for president. It hasn't changed now. So let me repeat, separate and apart from whatever uh, electoral concerns uh, you're describing. I want the people of Cuba, like people throughout this hemisphere, to have the opportunity to work, to raise their families, to start a business, uh, to express themselves, to criticize their leaders, uh, something that we in America, you know, take full advantage of, uh, to replace them if they're not working, which presumably is the aspiration of, I think, most people throughout Latin America. Uh, it is my hope that uh, as Cuba looks at what's happening in countries like Colombia and, and Brazil and Chile and uh, throughout the region, uh, they're going to start saying to themselves, uh, maybe there's a new path to take in, in the 21st century. Uh, and when that happens, they're going to have a, uh, uh, a welcome hand extended by uh, the United States of America. Tough talk about Fidel Castro is a political ritual in Miami. Mitt Romney delivered. If I'm fortunate enough to become the next president of the United States, it is my expectation that Fidel Castro will finally be taken off this planet. To a room of Cuban Americans, Romney criticized President Obama for loosening travel restrictions to the island nation. We have a president who thinks that a, that a tyrant, that a person who considers America their enemy, that that tyrant will give them something just by virtue of us giving them something. Romney has establishment Republican support, signified by two who joined him on stage today, including former Senator Mel Martinez and powerful Miami Congresswoman Ileana Ross Lettinen. And Romney talked about the core of his campaign, the economy. We must have a bold initiative for economic development and economic collaboration between the United States and the nations of Latin America. This president has decided to show a, a gift, to give a gift to Castro, to allow remittances to come from the United States to go into Cuba and to help the economy of Cuba. He's allowed more travel into Cuba, showing an olive branch, if you will. And how has it been met? It is met with a man, Vilman Vilar, who must sacrifice his own life through his hunger strike, with many, many, many people being oppressed, imprisoned. This president does not understand that by helping Castro, he is not helping the people of Cuba. He is hurting them. He is not putting forward a policy of freedom. He, he is accommodating and encouraging a policy of repression. And if I'm president of the United States, we will return to Helms Burton and the law, and we will not give Castro any gifts. If I'm fortunate enough to become the next president of the United States, it is my expectation that Fidel Castro will finally be taken off this planet. I doubt he'll take any time in the sky. He'll find another region to be more to his comfort. And we have to be prepared. This is the time, in my opinion, in the next president's first or second term, it is time for us to strike for freedom in Cuba, and I will do so as president.